British bases out. That was the demand from protesters in Cyprus on Sunday, who demonstrated outside a British Air Force base that had just sent jets to bomb Yemen. This Royal Air Force base, on land occupied during colonial rule and never given back, is also being used to fly surveillance missions over Gaza and send controversial cargo flights to Israel. Joining us now from Cyprus is Peter Yusuf, a member of the Cyprus Peace Council, which organised Sunday's protest. Peter, good to have you with us. Sorry about the problem with our connection. Thank you for allowing me to be here. Peter, can you tell me more about why you protested outside this British Air Force base on Cyprus, a country which most people think became fully independent from the British Empire in the 1960s? Cyprus Peace Council, we're protesting for the presence of the British bases, not only now, but for decades now. They had similar roles or a similar role also in the Iraq war and a number of conflicts in the region. This protest was a little bit on short notice as practically there was an increased activity, military activity from airplanes flying out of Akrodiri towards Israel in the past two months due to the bombing of Gaza. And on second, because we had also the air raids against the Houthi positions, Cyprus is being dragged into conflicts without actually being part of it. The latest air raid to Houthis caused instant an instant response from Houthis that they will there will be reprisals. And you know, we're not talking about precision bombing here. Yeah? If a Houthi missile comes towards Cyprus, it may land in Akrodiri Air Base, it may land in Limassol City itself. And what was the atmosphere like on the protest on Sunday? It was very, very, very angry. We had even we had even Palestinian protesters which had lost a family in the past week. Ahmed came forward and showed me the SMS he got from his brother. I think he got it on Tuesday. And the message read, good morning, brother. Last night we lost a family. And it was about his father two uncles, another two brothers, a sister, and three little nephews. And he can't do anything. Uh, he is, say for example, feeling guilt that he is on the island safe and the family back home is in danger. The British Defense Minister stated that there were 32 recorded RAF flights from Akrodiri to Israel from the October 7th up until, if I'm correct, mid-December. That would mean about one flight every two days. Residents of the village have been experiencing flights two or three per day. So there is a question here. A, how many actual flights have there been? And the question goes also like, have there been other flights, say, from the U.S. Air Force? That's one. Two. And the idea that the loads which uh, went to Israel were, were not lethal. Come on. Uh, it's ridiculous. Uh, we're talking about, uh, it's as if the defense minister is claiming that there was humanitarian aid. How rare is it for there to be a protest outside the British base? Do you think this will have caused some concern back in London, that people in Cyprus are, uh, are angry at how their land is being used to attack parts of the Middle East. We tried also to use a drone to capture the protests from above. And of course, the military authorities did not allow us. But they used their own drone to monitor the protest. We are talking about sovereign bases, military bases, which have been on the island since its independence. It's in the agreement of independence. And to tell you the truth, come on, the colonial era is, is gone. They just have to pick up the stuff, go home. And that was one of the demands of the protesters, right, for, the, for these bases, which comprise about 3% of Cyprus's landmass, to finally yes. be closed. And you're talking about even a very, very beautiful area in the sense of natural environment. So the, that uh, there is also an environmental aspect to the issue. 
which is being okay. It's it's of second importance, secondary importance, but still it's uh, it's very characteristic of how the British bases are practically. I wouldn't say destroying, but nature is being interrupted. You're talking that there is a salt lake next to the base, which is home to, I don't know how many thousands immigrating flamingos each year. And not to talk about the disturbance of the airplanes as such. Because if a fighter gets off the ground around, I don't know, 500, 700 meters from your house, your whole house is shaking, mate. And this is something that I've written about in the past is how many um, farmers' animals die from heart attacks due to low-flying aircraft noise on Cyprus. And the British base authorities just seem to routinely hand out compensation and take the attitude that this is just the cost of doing business rather than actually trying to stop these deaths taking place. And it's not only the airplanes. Uh, the British bases in Akrotiri have A, the airstrip. Okay, that's one. But they also have huge antennas, which are being linked practically with antennas on up in Trulus Mountain. Those antennas are for intercepting messages coming from the Middle East to Europe and vice versa. There have been worries whether those antennas, there is whether there's radiation coming out, which may increase the cases of cancer. That's another question which has to be searched at some point. Are there more protests planned outside the base in the coming weeks and months? That will depend also in the activity on the basis as such. For the time being, we do not have any, any more protests planned for the next couple of weeks at least. But should we see that there's going to be continuous air raids from uh, Akrodir Air Base towards Yemen, most probably there will be more. The big issue in the Cyprus Peace Council's opinion is that there, there is a very, very specific geographical location which Cyprus is in. We are talking about an island which is in the middle between Middle East, Northern Africa, and Southern Europe. Now, there are two ways where you can use this location. A, you could use it as an airplane carrier which cannot be sunk to commit air raids. That's one. That's what the British are doing right now. Or we could use the island as a bridge for negotiations and cooperation. That's what we want.